All right, in this video, we are going to show that the following two functions are inverse functions of each other. And then when we're done showing this algebraically, I'll come back and show you how they look graphically as well. Uh, but what you have to do to show that two functions are inverses of each other, since we're assuming that both of these are, you know, these functions are inverses of each other, what you want to do is you want to do composition. You want to say f of f inverse of x is equal to the same thing as f inverse of f of x. And what both of these things should be equal to, they should both be equal to x when we simplify it down. Um, both of these should be. But I tell you what, I'm going to erase that and come back and we'll see um, if this is truly uh, going to work. And it should, because it says show that they are. So I'm going to do this first one right here. We have to do them separately. And f of f inverse of x, this is composition. What you want to do is you want to take this entire function right here, f inverse of x, which is this function here. You want to take all of that and you want to plug it into f. But where do you plug it in into f? You plug it into that x right there. So we're going to take this entire thing right here in yellow and we're going to plug it into that x. That's what this means right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're taking this entire function, we're plugging it into that little spot right there, so let's go ahead and start writing this down. Four-fifths times, we're taking this entire piece and plugging it in, so 5x minus 5 over 4. And now we have to continue writing this thing down. So we've done 4x, or excuse me, 4 fifths x, there's 4 fifths x plus 1. And now let's just simplify this down. Okay, a little bit, a little shortcut here. Watch what I'm going to do. Um, four fifths. Inside of here, I'm going to factor that five out. So we're left with x minus one. And this is over four. Just a little shortcut because this is going to work out quite nice. Um, you could have multiplied. You could have taken four times this stuff, five times this stuff, you know, multiplying fractions. But a shortcut with multiplying fractions is if you have common factors at the top and bottom, like those fours, they cancel out. There's no need to waste your time and multiply the top by 4, multiply the bottom by 4, when you can turn it back around and cancel them out. Same thing happens with the 5s. So the 4s and the 5s cancel out. This leaves us with, well, what do we have left in, out of all this stuff? X minus 1? Yeah, X minus 1. And, you know, we can put over 1 if we want to, but there's no need to. Uh, we're left with just X minus 1 right there. And then don't forget your plus 1. And notice that the 1 and negative 1 cancel out, so we're left with X. So we did this one. Now let's take this process and reverse it now. By reversing, I mean let's do f inverse of f of x. So that's the part that we're going to work on now. So what we're going to do here, very similar to what we just did back here, except now I'm going to take f of x, which is this function. We're going to take all that and we're going to plug it into the inverse. So let's take all this stuff and let's plug it into that x right there. And let's see what we end up getting. Um, like I said, a while ago we took this whole function, plugged it into that x. Now we're going to take this whole function and plug it into that x right there. So here's what this looks like. Uh, we got 5 times this entire function. So we have 4 fifths x plus 1. So we got 5x, because we plugged in that entire piece, the 4x plus 1, we've plugged all that into there. Now we need to subtract 5, and we need to divide all this by 4. Alright, so now let's go ahead and distribute here. So 5 times 4 fifths, really that's going to cancel out that 5, but think about it. 5 times 4 is 20, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So really all we have there when we distribute is 4x. Then we have plus 5. And now let's just bring on this minus 5 down here. And this is all divided by 4. So therefore from here we can, uh, what can we do here? Cancel out those 5s. So we have 4x over 4. And notice 4x over 4. Cancel your 4s out as well. We got x. Notice that we get the same thing for both of these. And that's exactly what I erased a few minutes ago. I said that in order for these functions to be inverse, inverses of each other, f of f inverse of x and f inverse of f of x both must be equal to x. And as you can see here, that's exactly what we're getting. And that's how we show that two functions are inverses of each other. 
algebraically at least. Now, what is so special about this x anyway? I mean, why is it equal to x when we do composition here? And it deals with symmetry, and I want to show you that by graphing. So let's have a look. So what I've done here is I've graphed these two. Uh, they turn out their lines. I mean, like that's a line y equals mx plus b, and this actually is a line as well if you were to do some uh, separation like 5x over 4 minus 5 over 4. But anyway, these two functions are inverses of each other because if I look at the line y equals x, do you see that green line right there? Let me make this a little bit thinner. But that green line right here, the line y equals x, this is the line of symmetry, so to speak, for these two curves, the red and the blue. These two pieces here, we can fold that blue line over this green line and it would lie right on top of that red line. And the same thing down here, we could fold this blue over this green and it would lie directly on that red line. The line of symmetry is the line y equals x. So remember, when we did the inverse, when we verified that those functions were inverses, we did the composition on each one and we did end up getting x for both of those answers. And again, this is what I'm talking about right here. As you can see, we do get x for both of those answers. So this is how you show it algebraically as well as that other piece I just did showing you graphically as well. And one more piece to kind of tie it all together too. If, if you've uh, been talking about inverse functions in your algebra class lately, you've probably heard your teacher mention something about swapping x and y. Let me show you that while we're talking about it. Uh, let's plug 10 into this red line. Let's see what we get. If we plug 10 into x right here, 4 fifths of 10, that's going to be 8. 8 plus 1, we get 9. So no surprise there, that dot right there, 10 comma 9, that does lie on that red line because it's supposed to. All we did is plug 10 into x, 4 fifths of 10, that's 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Well, watch this. We can easily find a point on the inverse function by swapping x and y. Look at what I just did there. I swapped the x and the y from the red curve, and now I have a dot that lies on the blue curve, as you can see right there. Uh, let me do another one real quick. Uh, how about 15? Let's plug 15 into the red one. 4 fifths of 15. That's going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. 4 fifths of 15 is 12. 12 plus 1 gives you 13. See how that dot right there lies on the red curve? Well, what can we do to find a dot that lies on the blue curve? 13 comma 15. Swap x and y. I know you have heard of that before if your teacher has been talking to you about inverse functions. That is how you find an inverse function. One of the main steps. But uh, there you go right there. Now, what about this line y equals x? Let me give you a, a, a dot that lies on the line y equals x. How about... 12 comma 12. Well, see that dot right there? Well, that should lie on that line because notice y equals x. And if we swap them, it's still going to be the same dot because y equals x. But uh, that's just another way to tie all, in, all this stuff in together in regards to inverses, compositions, and, you know, swapping x and y's and this line of symmetry right here, y equals x. And that is it for this video. Hope it helped.